Our next guest sees some big opportunities in certain areas within that sector. Joining us now is Fort Pitt Capital CIO Dan I. Dan, so you like Thermo Fisher, you like Danaher. Why those in particular? Yeah, happy Friday, and and, and thanks for for having me. Um, so, you know, both of these companies were just huge beneficiaries of of COVID, you know, related testing and, and vac vaccine re revenues. And to put that into context, you know, Thermo's earnings per share were up, you know, seventy five percent in two thousand twenty, and another twenty two percent in two thousand and twenty one. So obviously, you know, that demand is is rolling off. Um, you know, the pharmaceutical customers that they serve are working through excess inventory levels and some of the smaller biotech companies that they, they serve are kind of feeling the pinch for tighter li uh, liquidity. But, you know, we we view those as, as very short term issues that have frankly been very well expected and even even telegraphed. And just longer term, these businesses have very durable growth profiles with exposure to, to very attractive end markets such as you know, biopharma processing, diagnostics, as, as well as life sciences tools. And, and what we really like is, you know, very sticky and very visible, highly visible revenue streams. Both companies okay. generate about 75% of their revenue from recurring uh, sources. So how do you feel about medical technology in general, the likes of Boston Scientific or Medtronic, and then uh, pharmaceutical names, perhaps on the other side? We've been talking quite a bit about uh, some of those lately. Yeah. So we really do like the, the pharmaceutical sector, especially the, the well-established large cap pharmaceutical companies that generate, you know, extremely attractive free cash flow profiles, you know, offer, offer investors really attractive dividends, have rock solid balance sheets. You know, they're growing their earnings at, at high single digits and the stocks are very cheap. You know, the, the pharmaceutical companies that we focus on are trading at call it eight to 12 times earnings, which we look at as 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 extremely you know, attractive and, and undervalued. Uh, so, Dan, we had Oak Tree. We have news that Oak Tree is also, uh, I guess, raising a $2 billion plus private credit fund that is going to be dedicated to life sciences. Um, when you see developments like this, uh, is, that, is, is that a positive uh, for, the, for the overall sector, or is that a sign that maybe this is a, this is a trade that could potentially get crowded quickly? No, I, th I think it's it's generally positive. Um, you know, what we're seeing right now is, you know, the, the two companies that I mentioned and focus focus on, you know, these are trading at 10 to 15 percent valuation discounts compared to their, their you know, five year averages. So the sector is is certainly not over overheated. But, you know, they're probably seeing the, the same thing that, that we see is, you know, these companies have very, you know, durable uh, growth profiles, you know, call it low to, to mid uh, low teens type of, of, of earnings growth valuations are, are attractive and again they have very visible you know revenues revenue and an earnings stream so I, I don't I definitely don't see it as a sign that the sector is is anywhere close to overheated